Hi. In this overview, I want to show you a little bit more about the Sockel Builder. So the Sockel Builder helps admins create complex uh, queries in Salesforce to select data. To select data, we're going to, in PDF Butter, we need a data source. So let's create a new data source of type Sockel. So the type Sockel indicates already that you can, of course, create your own queries. But as nobody really likes to create some queries, we have a Sockel Builder. When creating a new data source, uh, you have to be uh, careful to select the correct type. If you're going to select multiple records, it has to be a list. If you're going to select one record, it's going to be a single. If your, data, uh, if your uh, data source selects multiple records and it's single, obviously you're only going to see one record. So make sure that this one is set correctly. Cool. When your data source is created, you can click the button Sockle Builder and then the Sockle Builder will open up. First step is you have to select which object you want to start from. Here you can just select the opportunity. If you're not 100% sure if this is the correct opportunity or you have maybe multiple objects with the same name, then you can always uh, indicate the button here to show the API names. In this case, these are of course standard objects. So opportunity is still in a standard object API name opportunity. Otherwise it would have underscore underscore C. Let's switch off the API names, work with the labels and then select the opportunity object. From the opportunity object, you can now add the fields that you're gonna need. You can filter on the fields, opportunity ID, for instance, that's actually the first field I always select. So you're gonna have to have a selection of records eh, because in the opportunity uh, uh, the, uh, uh, object, there can be uh, thousands of records, but you just need that one opportunity. So we always gonna select the opportunity ID in this case. Eh? If you have another object you wanna start from, select the ID of that other object. And then continue adding the fields that you need. If you want to use a field from a related object, you don't have to create a separate data source for that, obviously. If you have, for instance, the account, an account is a uh, lookup object on the uh, opportunity, you can just say, I want to follow the relationship from the opportunity to the account. And then here you can start adding fields from the account. If you say, I want the uh, information from the account owner, then you can just, of course, filter on the owner, follow the relationship on the account owner and say, I want his name uh, information here. So I'm going to put the first name, the full name and the last name and maybe also his email address just because it's easy to filter on this kind of information. Okay, so if you want to go back to the opportunity, just click the back button and then you're going to go back step by step to the uh, um, yeah, to the uh, up one level in the uh, hierarchy of um, objects that we, that we had here. Okay, let's say that you have now all the fields that you need. You add, you have to add a filter. If you want to save your query now, the system will say, are you really sure you want to save a query without a filter? I don't think that's correct. So really make sure that if you don't have a filter, that you know what you're doing, because otherwise you might be selecting thousands and thousands of records from your production uh, database because you, you have no uh, filter set. Of course, no, I want to continue uh, uh, adding a filter. So I have to select the field on which I'm going to set a filter. In this case, the opportunity ID. Uh, I'm going to select the operator equals, and then you can have multiple options here. First of all, is the record ID. That's a variable that you get. Eh? If you start, for instance, from an opportunity or from a contract, an account, any object in Salesforce, custom object, it's going to have an ID. And that ID we provide to you via this um, variable immediately. So you can just say, yes, I want to filter on the ID of the record I'm starting from. So that's the record ID. Next to that, you can also say, well, I want that the uh, that the owner is the uh, user. So you can filter on the current user uh, here if you the, if that's required. Or you can say, well, I also want to filter on where the account name um, is uh, like a certain value, uh, my account. So and then you can just also have filters like that set set up. The order by, 
that's uh, the way to say, well, I want to order my data. In this case, we have a single data source, so it's not required. It would just uh, uh, yeah, make the data source a little bit slower. So it's not really required. But if you, for instance, have a list data source and you have your opportunity products, you can easily say, I want to select a certain field. And I want to say, say that I want to uh, 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 order it ascending or descending so that's uh, the smallest first and then the going to the bigger ones and a descending is obviously the other way around from big to small so let's say ascending and then well null first means actually if there are null uh, fields uh, so uh, certain fields that have no object uh, have no uh, value do you want to see them as first in the uh, list or you want to see them as last so if you just say, I don't mind, I, don't, I will not have any new values there, perfectly possible, then don't fill anything. Or you say, I want the new first. So now you can also add the order by. In the review, you can see all of the fields you have selected, the order by, uh, the where clauses, the order clauses. And of course, you can also see the circle that's created especially for you. So um, here I already see that I made a mistake yeah, uh, here. And what I'm going to do now is fix my mistake. I'm going to remove the where class and I'm going to create add a new one. So I'm saying the account name has to be like a custom value. And the value is percentage uh, my account percentage. So. Uh, if I leave out the percentage in the beginning, it will just uh, say it has to start with my account. If I leave, if I add the percentage in the beginning, it can start with anything and it just has to have the text. If I leave out the percentage at the end, it has to end with my account. So all of those things are perfectly possible with the Sockle Builder. That's quite some uh, functionality that you get right here just by um, configuration. Back to the review, you also see these kind of uh, options here where you say, well, I want to have the pick list value of this pick list. So as everybody knows, a pick list has an API value and has an uh, as a label. So if you select just the opportunity type, you're going to have the API value. If you say, I want to have the label, then you just check this checkbox and you get actually the API name and the label together so you can really ni now nicely use the label inside your uh, in, uh, inside your document and maybe do some filtering on the API name of the opportunity type uh, criteria that you set in your uh, in your top config uh, so that's really an, a nice added feature because now in a single click you can say give me the label and not the API name of my uh, pick list okay so that's it uh, if I now save my query, I have my query right here. Maybe later on, I need to go back and I need to uh, maybe make some changes. Then you can just click the button uh, Sockle Builder again, and you will automatically end up in the review screen. So here you can now say, oh yeah, I forgot a certain field. Let's go back to select fields. And now I want to add also the description of my opportunity or any other field that you has uh, that you want to do, uh, want to add here and when that's done just save the query and it will be automatically updated